The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great unique word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkano, to the highest, and peace be to the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And peace be to the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, so that they could truly understand Bible doctrine being the spiritual phenomena requires to be born again. Our Lord condemned the religious crowd together in Matthew 23, a religion-oriented mind person in John chapter 3 Nicodemus. And in fact, even indeed, the way this trends, what we are able to note today in the present Christendom, who are not walking according to the principal mind of Christ, but rather in return who are walking according to their own standards of thinking. And for such kind of a people, our Lord proclaims through Apostle Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the great religion-oriented mind. And he proclaims and he tells to them through Apostle Paul, he condemns them to teach the word of the Lord every day, every day, every day. And there is no such replacement for that everyday teaching in doctrine. Because he tells he has sanctified us through his word. There is no replacement for it. But many of the people today have not really understood what it is to obey than to do those things which are not against the word of God. They have not really obeyed what is the truth. We are not able to understand that every believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has been called to walk in the path of just. Like the shining light that shines more and more until to the perfect day. That's what we have read yesterday in Proverbs chapter 4. We should not rest satisfied until in all our habits, in all our ways, in all our associations, in all our religious position and service, all we do, where we go and where we, where we not go, we can truly say that we have the sanction of God's word and the light of his presence. That is what today many people have not understood. When you go back and want to look upon that idiot box called as television set, you find these unbelievers and believers together sanctioned and walking in their own thoughts, not walking in the light not able to really edify them through the knowledge of Bible doctrine because we know this is devil's world, the devil's airstrom card uses religion. But we the believers have been called not to follow the footsteps of the second of the first Adam but rather to walk the footsteps of the second Adam. And it demands our day by day process of learning the word. It demands that we need to go and take and give number one priority for the things pertaining to the mind of Christ. And there is no replacement for it. Therefore, we need to know when and how the word of the Lord has been given for us. We need to know what is the primary thing in our life, the principal thing in our life, or what it has to be the beginning of our life. When you are being called to the great presence of Lord God Almighty to serve Him in all of His presence in truth and in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit because in this New Testament our Lord calls us those who worship Him in spirit and in truth and Lord God the Father is seeking those true worshippers in Christ. And how much more it is that though you have been given to become the polytema privileges of high one that you have been never given in the past but now been given for us. The prayer which has been prayed on behalf of us that the word of the Lord should be intensely expounded in you when you are really desiring for it in Ephesians 1 17 as well when you find in Luke chapter 24 verses 45 it is Lord who has to reveal to you those things. Then why is it that we are not able to make up and go up and think upon those things where our Lord God Almighty has already prayed for us and given for us this great reality in the word which calls for them. Our God said, Lord, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is the truth. There can be no harm in the believer doing all he can to improve things on earth. Can there many useful societies exist and he can help on their good work? Can he?
If a believer allows himself to be sidetracked from the main line of God's purpose for us, then there is a very great harm indeed. You are following just thinking that you are doing goodism, you are doing legalism, you are doing moral standards, you are living a pious life. And the great sad part is, like people, like priests. Today, the crowd wants to engage such kind of a pastors who are domesticating to walk according to their own ways. They want to teach according to his terms. But the bona fide gifted pastor teacher, what we have read yesterday in Jeremiah chapter 26, the way he tells, Yes, what Lord has told, I have come here to teach to you. Though you may try to kill me and what it seemeth upright in your eyes, you do it. But remember, you are going to shed the innocent blood not only upon me, even to the entire land and the inhabitants of this earth where I reside. Dear brethren, why these things have been recorded and kept? That meant to say, the congregation, what is lacking in them by the daily teaching of the pastor teacher work, by proving his testedness and to become to the father being a favorable son, by slaving themselves in the teachings of the right doctrine, from the mind of Christ being taught for them, they have to certainly teach every day. And there is no replacement for it. It is not that you appoint as a pastor, it is God who is going to appoint that man to be a pastor for you. And to the respect to geographical location where our Lord wants him to be there. The favorable position where he can reside and he can be the right witnesses for the truth. In the right time, in the right age. And Lord knows how to send them. And before sending and commissioning, and commissioning them to this work, he trains them up. That is the main key of principal thing. And while training, do you know what does he do? The male believer who has been given this bona fide gift certainly gives his life as a temporary sacrifice in each and everything. That believer has learned that the things on this earth and the things pertaining to this earth so that you can indeed make good goodism or making your legalism to be priority number one are nothing in comparison to the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ and the word of the Lord demands virtue and virtue is not acquired without the daily learning of Bible doctrine. That's what the believer will learn and understand it. But the majority of the problem today is they haven't kept the rebound straight. And many people may find in my tapes that I haven't been praying when the beginning of my message. The only reason is the people who watch in the YouTube, they don't have enough time to certainly look after prayer, the content, what we teach. In my earlier tapes, there was a prayer whenever I used to start my message. Even as such, today I want to do that. Because without rebound, without being taught under the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, without being under the controlling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you cannot really grow up and one point of a millionth mm in your spiritual life. The true issue, when you want to believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, natural man cannot understand these things. The true issue there, it is the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, teaching them the truth. After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is mentoring us from the bona fide gifted pastor teacher so that you can grow up to learn and to understand the truth. Without knowing this truth, you cannot labor along. And many people thought the Pentecostal crowds think the truth is what? Speaking in tongues. The doctrine of demons which have been counterparted in our systems of this world of Christendom, which is not at all being oriented to the mind of Christ, neither they have known John 17, 17, when our Lord has prayed for them. Sanctify them through the truth. What is the truth? The word is the truth. And the way how we are getting today the modern translations, which have really erased the real essence of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, and trying to nullify it according to their own terms. And the laborers are also being not really digging enough. The laborers by which I meant the bond slaves of God. The bona fide gifted pastor teachers of God. Whose duty is to study and teach. They are also shrinking away from the real responsibility which has to be laid down upon their shoulders. 
until unless you go back and dig the word from the original language of the scriptures you cannot truly really understand what is the real mind of Christ though they may be a pseudo minds of Christ teaching to you all thinking that this is truth without naming them even to differentiate the doctrine with the dispensations and doctrine is not something which you can really get worried to know doctrine is nothing but the daily teaching 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 of the mind of Christ and some people have called to be to be the tenants or doctrines of the church whichever they seem feasible whichever they thought it could be best suited for me whichever they thought even if they could follow the lustful patterns of the walls in nature and not proving what is acceptable and well pleasing in the sight of God they thought if they can follow those things it could be great because even though when it has been told for us it is not to be named among you because you are being now as saints and which is behooving for you that you think But they say, still we love lies. They say, still we love jesting, moral agents. They say, we still want to indulge ourselves in paramour relationships. Does not the word of the Lord teach for us? Those who engage in such kind of such and such things, like paramour, having more eagerness for greedy, all of these things, will never inherit the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Christ. Inherit in the sense, they will lose their real authority. They will lose their real power. If you have your own home on this earth, wherewith you have been designated under your name, that is what you have. That is your inheritance, maybe given by your father or by you acquiring it. If some tenants are coming there and telling you to vacate, which is not theirs, how do you feel? Likewise, our Lord said, even after behooving to be saints, and if you do such and such works, where the Gentiles seek, where the Gentiles think, where the Gentiles love to do it, you are going to lose your inheritance in the heaven, in the kingdom of Christ, and also in the kingdom of God, the two things. Kingdom of Christ may be referring to the millennium rule. Kingdom of God to the eternity which is going to follow. Forever you are going to lose it only for the short span of time that you are going to spend your witnesses on this earth. Just for this short span of time you don't know when is your rapture. You don't know when is your death. And you go on till. Let me enjoy the paramour relationship. Let me enjoy my physical gratification outside the marriage. Let me do this, let me do that, let me have greedy of money, let me have the mental attitude since reigning in me. Let me not forgive them even what we can find in Colossians 3, 13 and 14, where our Lord says, as Christ has forgiven you, so you should be tolerating and forbearing one another. But what do we do? We still have Christians as our name, but we are more jealousy than unbelievers in our revenge tactics, in our retaliation to be paid back. When Rabshakak told those things in Isaiah chapter 36, comparing my Lord Yahweh with other gods, telling that, can he deliver you? The moron Hezekiah went along into the temple of the Lord, the house of the Lord, and tore his clothes and sat there for weeping. Why such kind of a state? Because not heeding to the instructions of the head. And who is the head? Wisdom. The mind of Christ. The word of the Lord is the head. Though many prophets came along in the past. They went on to tell to them. If you want to be a king. Sitting upon the throne and ruling. You should write at least once a copy of the law. And do you not think during the period of Isaiah. That law was existing. Absolutely it was existing. Many recoveries might have been made. In fact, even it, Isaiah was the word of Lord for them during that period. But this Hezekiah thought it is better for him to engage his life to be increased by 15 years by having the sundial reversing back to be a sign for him. But he never thought that each and every day was so important. It is not that he should tear his clothes and rent his clothes, his garments and sit in the house of the Lord, but rather in return tear that Rabshakeh by the word of the Lord and tell that my Lord will certainly deliver. When he is dethroning my Lord among the comparison to other gods, and asking them, if you hear to Hezekiah, you will eat your own excreta and drink your own, wine, own urine. Hezekiah would have learnt the word, would have confidence in the word of the Lord, would have told. 
I have been anointed king by the Lord and I walk in the principle that which goes after the mannerism of King David and I really want to be the man after God's own heart and Ezekiel would have told by tearing down Rabshakeh and sending a great warning telling to the poor Lord telling to the point that my Lord will deliver to that king Assyrian who has been raising that time does not the word say without the permission of God not even a single thing which is going to hurt you is going to enter. Then why it is that it has been happened to such kind of a great historical example for us today as well in the church age. Why is this bad things that are happening by which I mean the fakery of past teachers. Who are Kleptes, Lastes, Mistotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos, Sharuras minded pastors in our pulpits. Why they are entering? Because you have rejected to orient yourself in the mind of Christ. You have rejected to catch and latch upon the head so that the head can direct the other members of the body. And what does Proverbs 4, 7 teach for us? Wisdom is the principal thing that doesn't give you any meaning at all. Go back and lick and dig in the reality of the Hebrew. You will find there the word which has been used in Genesis 1, 1 and John 1, 1 which realizes for you all to tell Rosheth. And that meant to say the head, the beginning. After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the principal point for you as a newborn baby to desire sincere milk, it should be wisdom. But many people don't think what our Lord prayed for us in John 17, 17, to be the wisdom in Christ. They have thought, let me go and seek and search those prophets. Are those pastors who don't train you up in the real principle of the word of the Lord. And let me go and do my tithes. Let me go and do my weekly ones program to the church. And let me run some attraction by making some people to believe such and such fakery of false doctrines. Making them to follow the miracles. Making them to follow the healings which I don't deny they exist today. But the temporary spiritual gifts when they have been seized Now the true issue is nothing but the mind of Christ The word of the Lord That's the true miracle in your life When you change according to the precepts of the first Adam Comparing to the image of his dear beloved son on this earth And that demands day by day process of learning the word That demands day by day growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine The Hebrew word Rosh or Rasheth Which is meant to say in Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. At any cost you have to acquire it. Without acquiring that wisdom, your life will be, though you are being named as king in this great and unique dispensation of the church age, like Hezekiah who went along and tore his garments and sat before the house of the Lord. When a moron unbelieving king cupbearer comes and tells, and compares my Lord Yahweh to that king. And he tells the words to other gods in comparison. And dethrone and defame my Lord's name. This moron king wants to come and tell. Telling to the point. Renting his clothes. Is that right with you today? Does not the word of the Lord teach for us in 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 7, getting every thought into captivity for Christ, pulling down each and everything which goes against the knowledge of God? Any bulwark, any logical reasonings, any things that can go against the imagination of Christ. And you are being called to pull it down. Far less rupture, cack and thing. Comparing my Yahweh, my Elohim, my Lord God, rock the salvation to other gods who are no other, who are no gods at all, who are being serving with made out of wood and stones with their own hands and giving out their oblations of their excreta and urine because their thinking is blinded and there is no light in them. Why the principal thing that has been failed? They haven't taken the word as number one priority. But we should know after salvation what? After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, why have we still kept alive? To latch onto that principal thing known as wisdom.
Wisdom is like the hand for you. The many words which could be used in the reality of wisdom, the rosh, the source which it has from it of Rashid, the head, the person who is the chief, who is our leader, other appointed or self-appointed, the prince, the captain, the head of the family. And metamorphically, when it has been used as rosh, it meant to say the most excellent species with extreme joy. How they can become the most excellent species? When we are being given this great unique dispensation of the churches as Alakane Ketesis, we have been given to be the most excellent species. Many people haven't understood these things. Dear brethren, whatever is the best, whatever is the highest and supreme, wherever it is the highest place, that's the way we can call it as Rosh. What is best for this mankind on this earth? Salvation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What is the highest and the best or whichever it could be in the highest place after salvation on this earth while you have been kept alive? The knowledge of Bible doctrine, the divine dinosphere, the holy mountain of holiness where you need to reside and take in the word and teach the word and in return being believers grow up in the word. Hezekiah failed to become the king. He failed to write at least once the entire law, Torah, so that he could be the footsteps following his forefather, David. But dear brethren, what went wrong? Thinking that being a king and having supreme authority, enjoying and laboring the grace of God in vain, Realizing to tell, oh, have you not known how many things I have done for you, Father? Have you not known I have done for you many things? Remember them. Why this sickness upon me extend me 15 years and what good it but nothing but even putting the point of death to Isaiah? Is that your life today on this church age? You are not being called for such and such things. You are being called to be a king, to walk after the mannerism, to get confirmed to the image of his dear beloved son because we share his destiny, we share his sonship, we share his heirship, we share his election. When we are sharing his destiny, then it meant to say to reach MGG. It is not that you go and give excuses when the Lord's Supper has come to you to invite and to enjoy in this great knowledge of Bible doctrine, telling to the point, Father, let me, did it, let me, bury, my, let me bury my father. And then you say, no, our Lord says, let the dead bury the dead, but you follow me. And someone will say, no, I have just been recently married, married and got a wife. I will be with her. And they said they are not going to come to the supper. And someone said, no, we have bought some bulls. I have to go and do the labor in the field. And even they were not been coming. The reasons what we can learn in Luke chapter 14, the great invitation which our Lord has given for them to come and attain and enjoy in this Lord's Supper. That invitation the Israelites rejected and we need to take now. The supper of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Not to know that we have to waste our life in useless and worthless things on this earth. Thinkings and following some moral standards, legal standards and daily not teaching the word of the Lord. That's how Hezekiah example will turn out to me in Isaiah chapter 36 and 37. And then Hezekiah went along to do, tearing his clothes. But what do we find? The church age believer being as a king in Christ, the heavenly citizen in Christ. Even if he neglects the principal thing, which is nothing but the word of the Lord, number one priority, the wisdom. Wherewith even the pastors are neglecting this principal thing in our pulpits. So, as if they have been neglecting these principal things, they don't even know how to select a candidate for the things pertaining to the work of Christ. Like people, like priests, they want to domesticate their own things and say, this has not been prayerfully selected. Hmm. What is prayerful selection in the mind of Christ? When you don't know the word of the Lord as number one priority to be in your pulpits, when you don't know the word of the Lord has to be taught in your pulpits every day, then what you're going to select prayerfully, it is nothing but legalism. And many people don't understand what is the reality in the world. So like King Ezekiel, many people are wasting their true life. 
They are not taking their time to see that the grace of God should not be wasted in vain. By the time when your, when your obedience is ready, you have to take revenge upon all of those things which go against the word of the Lord, against the mind of Christ and get every thought into captivity for Christ. How is it possible you as a believer, our warfare is not flesh, our warfare is spiritual one and our warfare is the unseen angelic host. And how can you be prepared for it if you are not latching upon to the head? The highest and the best one which could be used metamorphically for Rosh signifies to this great Alekinicetes species is nothing but the mind of Christ. The basic meaning of Rosh is head. It can be the head of the human body, the head of an animal or a statue. And it refers to us to the head in the sense Christ being our Lord as a male believer head. And for our Lord, the male believer, being for Christ, the head is God the Father. And for a woman who is our wife, where she has to be, uh, the head for her is we. The logic behind all of these things, head, head, head. The principal thing wherewith you should sustain on this earth to be the most excellent species of all time, recorded and kept for us in this Alekene Ketesus period, is what you should know, the basic meaning of your life, which is nothing but wisdom being the head. Without wisdom or the mind of Christ or the Lord God Yahweh Elohim, you don't have any other meaning to get oriented to get the other functions of your body if not being directed by the head. The head should be the things pertaining if it is not directing the members of your body to yield righteousness unto Christ. That meant to say that head has been spoiled. That head has been corrupted with the thinking of this world. The head is following the first Adam and it is not following the last Adam of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore you follow those principal things in the psychological thinking of your brain. Starting from the precepts of man and the doctrines of demons. And thinking that this could be the head. No way. The majority problem today when many people are entering into the ministry without even having. That it has to be a bona fide gift from the head of the department of the church. To certainly be trained in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by those faithful pastors who were earlier than us. Who have been teaching the word of the Lord as number one priority. More than Jeremiah because Jeremiah was not having the country. The enabling, the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it was an endowment. But for us, we, though we have been called to tell the least in this kingdom of Christ, which has been given for us right now in the church age, where the Lord has been called, the kingdom of Christ will be in the millennium. But in this church age, where we can call it, the least who has been there in this church age is greater than John, than anyone in the John the Baptist could be. Because John the Baptist was greater than all the prophets. The least one is greater than John the Baptist. That meant to say, the least one, whosoever they are, are the pastor teachers who have been given this bona fide gift and who are teaching the word of the Lord every day, they are greater than Jeremiah. And the point, what I want to prove to you all is, when Jeremiah could tell in the controlling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, if you want to slay me, you can slay. I did not worry about that. But what the words of the Lord have been told for me, I have been telling to you. Therefore, amend your ways and your doings and repent so that the Lord could not get you the harm which he has proclaimed against this city to be called as like Siloha. And the people thought it is best for us to put him to the judgment of death because he spoke such and such things. But what the word of the Lord says, Jeremiah never cared for it. Such should be the today's bona fide gifted pastor teachers, more powerful than Jeremiah. More powerful than John the Baptist who spoke upon the face. And the congregation should come to know what is the depth in them. And how much difference it is in comparison to the mind of Christ and the original word of the Lord in the original languages. And in comparison to the translations what they think that it could be better and best for us to follow. The pastor teacher has that guts. In nothing he shall be ashamed. The bona fide gifted pastor teacher has been given that authority, exousia's authority to edify, not to destroy you, and not to be ashamed when he stands in the presence of the Lord with what that authority has used. 
for glorifying Lord's name to the highest like an unprofitable slave that which has been duty to that which has been duty to do and the doctrine that which has been sent by God the Father to teach to the congregation in nothing you shall be ashamed because of that authority and today's Christian and pastors don't think the daily teaching should be the ultimate authority in our pulpits they have their mind oriented to the things which are no value at all they have in their life that which has to be not number one priority as number one priority because they don't latch upon to the principal thing they don't latch upon to this rashit rosh the head and all the other members of the body how they get coagulated with the things pertaining to the head direction you are every facet, you are every treating, you are every walking of life and far above to be called a saint in this great and unique dispensation of the church age how you need to be much oriented because you have not known, not learned, you don't know how to get oriented you think just I attend weekly months to the church, it's enough Lord requires my money, it's enough I'm paying my tithes, it's enough who cares about your sacrifices, dear brethren? Does not the word of the Lord teach for us in Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 40 telling to us your sacrifices and offerings are a vain oblings to me to obey is greater sacrifice than anything else my word to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine is greater than anything else that you can think it is required for you in this church age the majority of the Christians have not understood these basic things proving what is right and acceptable in the sight of God what is well-pleasing and well-seeming delight of our Lord is not been made. Many majority of the Christians have not understood what it is that we are being called to be the most excellent species of all time. We are being called as Aleke Niketesis and this most excellent pieces have their origin from the head and in Colossians 3 we have been told the great passage from verse number 1 till to the point of verse number 10 or 11 or till to the point of the entire chapter of verse 18 let the word of the Lord richly dwell in you when you put to death the things pertaining to your roles in nature and since you have been called to look the things that are high above not the things that are below then you need to mortify the deeds of the flesh of your body that is nothing but necromatic put to death and get confirmed to the image of his dear beloved son image of his dear beloved son what a life it is if you don't confirm to the image of his dear beloved son though being called as most excellent species if our lord would have granted such kind of a grace to the past dispensation giving them this polytum of privileges indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit giving them to the reality of the completed canon of scripture and if they would have really repented the way how David repented and brought back once again to know to love and to understand the power of Lord God Almighty telling to his dear beloved son the counsel of his last words in first King in first Chronicles chapter 28 and 29 don't think you can play kiddish with the Lord that Yahweh even knows the imagination behind your thoughts the motivations behind it be careful in serving him with a whole heart and Lord God Almighty in 1st Corinthians 16 31 is searching and seeking those men whose hearts are loyal to the God whose hearts are ready to stand in the gap of Christ to show strength on behalf of them and strengthen them for his work don't you ever think without having the life in the principal thing wisdom you can enjoy the life on this earth there is no life there is no pleasure there is no meaning there is no definition there is no purpose though you may have to think wisdom in such and such terms though you may have to think friends of us such and such purposes the reasonings that are happening in your life like the way how Job had three friends to tell you might have done sins secretly wherewith you might have not confessed you confess those sins and Lord will certainly deliver you you might have friends such kind of a people orienting to you to tell to you but all these things will become meaningless if you don't latch upon to the head 
As a man thinks, so he is, said the word. Then what the mind should think, what the head should think, being the most excellent species of this church age. They should think knowledge of Bible doctrine. There is no excuse for it. And neither will be an excuse if we ignore this principal thing which has been translated in Proverbs 4 7 of KJV. But it has been called as Rashith, beginning, beginning, beginning of wisdom. And the root from where this word beginning is been used, it has been coming from the noun of Rosh. Dear brethren, it is the head which certainly guides us. In Job 22 12, the same word Rosh has been used for the zenith of the sky. It is also used in some idioms. Recompense their way upon their head means to pay evil, evil for deeds what they have done. To lift up the head is declaring innocence. Can we declare innocence in the sight of the Lord by daily learning and proving and what is acceptable in the sight of Christ? Why aren't we declaring innocence? Why aren't we able to raise our head? Therefore, Apostle Paul Couch counts in Philippians 1.25, In nothing I shall be ashamed because I have done the glory of God and I am waiting for that great glory of God to come again. Because in my flesh I have not taken such and such, but have made everything which is possible and pleasable to God. He lifted his head high above and he has told the things pertaining to us. I have been imitating Christ and you follow my footsteps. The rosh of Apostle Paul was high lifted. Lift up the hand means to restore a person to his previous position. And to lift up means to declare innocence, the intention of being absolutely innocent. When Rosh is used in the Hebrew verb, it can signify the victory and power of an enthroned king in the realm known as Rum, R-U-M. Thus signify the victory and the power of the enthroned king. We haven't known to be king in Christ. To manifest your each and every trade as a king, and to be victorious in every walk and every breath and every thought getting into captivity for Christ and to in return acclaim this power of the God by becoming sitting upon the enthroned king do you know how much power it is required first to qualify as a king Lord has made it in return to be, to be the king in Christ you have to write at least once the Bible and I prefer you all to write upon the knees if you have enough strength and Lord grants you more strength a man of age of 64 can read the Bible upon his knees at least once then why can't you and furthermore for the pastor teacher being kings they have to certainly write at least twice once from the original languages of the scriptures and once from the translations whichever they read and when they are conquering it the getting every thought into captivity for Christ is the conquering then no doubt like Rabshakak many people may come and tell but what you should say not like Ezekiel renting down your clothes and weeping and wailing before the house of the Lord you should say my obedience has been ready and I'm here to take revenge upon them and it is Lord who shall deliver me because I have been taken the principal thing of Rosh the wisdom to be in me and I know how to win the battle because more than the wisdom of my enemies says Psalm 119 97 through the following verse of 98 and 100 more than my enemy I have more wisdom because of thy precepts because of thy word and more than the wisdom of my teachers I have in me because of thy word because of thy word an enemy is nothing that's what you should proclaim and you should go and win the battle and get every thought every logical reasoning which goes behind the knowledge of Christ every bulwark with that goes against the knowledge of Christ you pull them down and you show forth and while you are pulling them down, you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The things that you have learned, Lord God Almighty gets to your mind to teach those things. And you cannot understand these things until and unless you wake up to realize the importance of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And in order to get the importance of the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you should be a believer in the Lord, being born again. A morons like Zakir Nayak or Sheikh Hamadidad or anyone who does not believe in my Lord and wants to have the critical thoughts or criticism about my Bible, they are 0, 0, 0, 0 because they are not being born again. They haven't their salvation secured in my Lord and they are telling the Bible they can preach, the Bible they can teach and even any moron like a dog they can preach, even Donkey thought to Balaam, but Balaam did not hear. And now in the church age, every believer has been called to be like that ang as called, carrying our Lord in our lives. No one has sat on it. What does it mean to say? 
Accept our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no way that anyone can teach you all the word of the Lord. And that meant to say you have to be born again. Not having all your prejudiced minds of thoughts in your religion that can help you. That meant to say some other religion has sat upon you. But we being born again, only one religion reigns, the unique religion reigns and only that one religion is our teaching. And that one reality of the teaching through that religion is nothing but for the world where I'm telling the religion because Christianity is not a religion and that religion is Christianity. For the unbelievers to understand if they can think that Christianity is one among the religions. But we know as Christians, Christianity is not a religion. Or do we know that? Christianity is nothing but the relationship with Lord God the Father on the basis of his dear beloved Son, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So that we being the body and he is the head and the head, the body should latch upon to the head. That's what it says. And the Hebrew word is Kazakh. Latching upon the head. Daily intending to grow upon the word of the Lord. Having all our nutrition, all our food. From the daily source of Bible doctrine and holding upon to that great and main principal thing known as wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. And that is the only principal thing so that now you can rise up your head with innocence before the Lord and tell in nothing I shall be ashamed my father in heaven. Like an unprofitable slave that which was my duty to be done I have done it. And furthermore, the verb when it has been used as room, it meant to say for us, reality, victory and power of an enthroned king. Victory and power, victory and power, victory and power. The victory where Satan has no power and authority over you. And you as a believer in the Lord, when you believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have been exalted superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Satan is nothing. And for us to witness, this world alone is not enough. If you grow up to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, knowledge of Bible doctrine, to give it as a principal thing, the world where you have been resided to witness is nothing because you have been called through this world even to witness to the unseen worlds of the angelic conflict. But you say, behooving to be saints, and you follow not the saint life on this earth. The major problem is, number one, the believers have not really desired to know the truth. Therefore, they domesticate such kind of a pastors to them who want to have the itching ears and who want to have their well-pleased thoughts to be told with a great appreciation in the church. Such and such man, such and such person, being the secretary or being the committee members, they want their praise, not the glory of God. They do not know who have been appointed in the church. The passage of Galatians 1, 10 and 11. If I were to please men, then I wouldn't have been the bond slave of Christ, said Apostle Paul, and he told to walk in his steps and imitate him, so that the minister of the Lord could be found faithful. How can he prove the test of our Lord? With the great pen Apostle Paul might have written in Philippians 2, 20, 21 and 22. I don't find the like sold man to me. Who can really worry about the things pertaining to Christ and not the things which they are worrying for their own selves. And then he gives the reason how the bona fide gift fed pastor teacher will be all about. As a son is helpful to the father, so Timothy was to Paul and how he was helpful to him by slaving himself. He became a bond slave without getting yourself mastery over your life. The way how Apostle Paul quotes in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27 in the Hismas game, striveth for the mastery, making his body to be absolutely available to be the bond slaves of our Lord. You cannot win that battle. And he knew why I am not able to find such men set in the Philippians 2.21. Though he had genuine friends in the Rome, they shrank to go and teach in the Philippi. Likewise today, though we have the things pertaining in the mind of Christ in the original languages of the scriptures, we shrank not to learn from the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and teach the word. 
Therefore, Apostle Paul quotes, they are interested of their own things, but they are not interested of the things pertaining to Christ. Many people have been entering into the ministry without even having the fear to know the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and their, and their words of and, and their words of derivation and teach them the truth and how much doctrine has been left in there in each and every word when we go along to teach in that manner. Your life will be changed if you could understand the word of this Hebrew which has been preaching today, Rosh and Rashid and the way how Rome could be a resultant of you buying an enthroned king over victory and power wherewith you walk in each and every facet of your life, in each and every breath of your life and there is no way that you could be absolutely dethroned because it is the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit when you are there in his fellowship controls you, leads you, guides you and makes you to enter the victory every facet of your thought, every thinking of your word every footstep so that you should not slumber you should not get strained you should not do this you should everything will be taken care of by the word of the lord and lord knows that which is of a principal thing when we give respect to it and obey to it then certainly he knows how to control us the great you have not confessed your sins the great you have not given the word of the lord as number one priority in your life you are going to lose that which is the main intention of doctrine. You are going to lose that you have been called to be the most excellent spiritual species which never existed earlier. Neither will exist in the future but right now in the church. This most excellent species given with the great excellent power of authority given much and take and expected much. And we compromise weekly ones, monthly ones, we compromise by our tithes, we compromise by our legal standards and we are not able to satiate our souls with the word of the Lord. What a great apostasy or what a great drought it is in our life. Do you think Lord's hand is short not to provide you those bona fide gifted pastor teachers who have been faithfully trained enough? Lord's hand is not short. It is in you that you are not able to ask Lord to send you those shepherds who shall feed you with knowledge and with understanding. It is up to you if you are not able to believe upon the true evangelism sent by those professional class of evangelists who tell to you the true issue being the word, the word, the word. In evangelical work it is the word. It is not by a miracle or healing that you should be saved. It is by the word and it is the effective ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to believe upon you, to say to you, to believe upon the mind of Christ, to believe upon you the gospel of Christ, to believe upon the work of Christ and to tell to you all the truth. It is the word by the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. It is Lord God the Holy Spirit takes the word. It doesn't take any other thing apart from the word to witness you. If it is for your salvation, the word, then after salvation, it is the breath more than your life that you take should be the word of God because that is your head. And you should be in the victory and the power of an enthroned king. This each and every word where those things have been written for us. If you can go back and look upon that etymology in the verb or in the noun or in the source of its beginning from where this word has been derived has many applications to our life and a simple verse Philippians Proverbs 4 7 our Lord writes to the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit conveying them from the mouth of Yahweh so that Lord God the Holy Spirit should pen them for our edification in the future life as well being preserved because it is immutable none can acquire it none can change it to alter those things except the translations which we can read in the modern translations today but in the original languages, they have their meaning. In the original languages, when it has been said, Rashid, the source being from Rosh, the word being Rum, you have your life there. You have everything that has been needed for you all to understand and to apply it for your practical application in this life. You have everything to tell. Without wisdom, there is no life. Without wisdom, there is no breath. Without wisdom, there is no food for you. Without the knowledge of Bible doctrine to be taken as your head to guide, to guide, to lead you and to make you to understand in this particular church age, the great Alekhine Ketesus which has been given in this dispensation of the church. How excellent you are. How glorious you are. How beautiful you are. 
and we exchange all of these things to the mind of man not to the mind of Christ the sad part with us grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit the greatest sad part with the so-called pastors who don't believe the indwelling ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit how can they prove to test when Lord gives them the test to prove that ministry with great authority Apostle Paul says this exousious authority given to me it has been used for your edification not for your destruction and I will not be ashamed when I appear in the presence of Christ that I have used his authority for edification and when we are telling you all these things don't ever think you can domesticate such and such a mind of pastor from your thinking Lord God the Holy Spirit knows whom to appoint you to the church and follow his teachings because he's going to make you out that which is dirt in your life and don't cover up it with hypocritical standards of legalism look back and understand the truth as you can cover your hair with dye and color black and color it color it back to black so it is not with Christ what you are that it is what is the word of the Lord that it is it is not that you can attract them by such and such legal standards of looking to please them by your attraction of personalities all those things are nothing what the word of the Lord is that's it you cannot have your pseudo hypocritical standards of mind and the way how you appear to be even to the reality when the word says there is no legitimate title to the pastor teacher to be as reverent they say we quote and take as reverent taking the highest and place of Lord to be calling themselves as Yahweh Shakam but they can't that legitimate title belongs only to my Christ my Lord my Yahweh and the so-called pastors today they want to engage and tell we will be a reverence be a humble servant and to be called as a pastor teacher that's enough and teach the reality of the word why you want to take in the place of Yahweh Elohim and tell that you will be the reverend all these hypocritical standards are whereas the truth in the Christ all these hypocritical standards though the word of the Lord says should not be practically applicable for you but you say we will do it because you are pastors but you say we will be reverence a great judgment is waiting for those and some morons believe if they don't have doctor before reverend then he's not well qualified some people want to look upon the way how he has been qualified in the theological education and he wants to have by paying some scraps of paper and that is called as money and not the documentation by real hard working upon the neology if they don't have such and such degrees then they are not qualified and people want to be attracted by those qualifications what is happening to today's Christendom the main reason that is happening in today's Christendom is nothing but ignorance and arrogance ignorance to know the truth and arrogance to correct to get oriented to the knowledge of Bible doctrine arrogance enough like two past minded pastors who are proud enough not to correct and they say how it is to be corrected so what if you are not obeying the word then for what you will obey ultimately it is not the way though you have white hairs you cover it with the dye and make it black likewise it will be in the church no in the presence of Lord God Almighty if you are white it will be white if you are black it will be black you can't expect and think that you can cheat my God by the mockery of your standards the men could be cheated but not my God God knows your inner nature God knows your inner thing and for what you're coming to this ministry and for what you're leading in this ministry fear God and not men men are only having breath in their nostrils they are not fit for you all to judge in the right season of time our Lord knows how to judge when we all appear in the presence of Christ and you should be judged by the Lord you should impress my God and you should know how to honor his word above his name by the daily holy manner of walk of life by becoming walking Bibles in Christ and don't waste your time in useless and worthless speculations of this earth spending your time to look upon genealogies spending your time to look upon such word this word trying to gain the rationalism and the empiricism put together and telling that this could be the principle of life no the principle of life is the wisdom and the knowledge of Bible doctrine 
Take in so that you could be like light. Take in so that you could be the salt. Take in so that the darkened, oriented people can know when we are labored, we are not labored in vain because we have taken in the word of the Lord and we walk among the midst of this perverse and crooked generations. How much of the word you have in you that counts in the sight of the Lord? It is not that how you have been holier than thou attitude in comparison to the other members of the church. And many people today think I am holier than him, I am holier than her. That's enough to me. The real standards of your holiness, if you are not being controlled of Ladgar the Holy Spirit by using rebound in the privacy of your priesthood. And where Lord God the Father is seeking those true worshippers who worship Him in spirit, that is what controlling power of, or the filling power of Lord God the Holy Spirit and in biblical truth, you think you are doing good? No way. Without rebound, even the minute part of your sin, either by thought, word or deed, when you don't confess in the homologia case of God, privately to God the Father, not to renounce your things before other members of the church, the renouncing of your things which mentions in James 3 it teaches for us that your practical application of life so that you, they can forgive you the sin that you have made because now you have become to be the saint of great application of his manifestation power in you the great application of sainthood in your life and realizing that now you are a saint because every man who has been born will certainly sin and there is no way that he can be out of sin but the one the great ones are those who are penitent sinners who recollect the things what they have done and certainly recorrect and go along with the tracks of Christ leaving those things that are behind and if you are not following the head apostle Paul tells for us in Philippians 3 8 to 11 Everything that was gained to me, I counted it as dung in the sight of God, excrement in the sight of God, which is not worthy enough. The only thing wherewith now I want to look and think and consider is nothing but the mind of Christ. Superior place, which is far above than anything else. I have to go and achieve it. What a privilege it is for us to learn those things. What a teaching it is for us to understand about those things. By the man who said, you follow me. By the man who said, in nothing you shall be ashamed. Because you have been called to be the room, the enthroned king. The great enthroned king, wherewith you and I have been called to work out with great victory and power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in you. The first victory of salvation, where is Satan nothing to you. The second victory, do by witnessing to the truth in every holy manner, walk of life that you walk. And getting every thought into captivity for Christ. That victory by the power given to you, you have to be the enthroned king in Christ. Every individual believer have this privilege. Every individual believer in the Lord have this great privilege of equal realm and equal opportunity. It is not just only for the pastor teachers. It is for every infect even in every believer. Lord God the Holy Spirit resides at the moment of salvation. But those who walk and wake up to look the Christ shining in their lives in a due course of time. When they could realize that this worth is nothing, this earth is all lies. The prince of the power of this air is being a murderer from the beginning and is a father of lies. And they, until unless they, they wake up to seek the true peace in Christ and they wake up to seek the truth of reality in the love of God, they don't have double peace in them. Until then they cannot look and understand for what our Lord has oriented ourselves to look upon the most excellent spiritual species of all time. The Rosh Alakainakitesis. But what do we do? We are not having uprightness in our head to look upon the word of the Lord. Just because of the father fear, mother fear, people will go to Sunday school. And the parents do not even give them the right track from the right pastor teacher who has to train them up. By appointing those great Sunday school teachers who are in return having the like-minded or like soul. As Timothy had in the concern of case of Paul. And desiring those things of Christ, not the things of this earth. But what are we doing today? Pastor has been appointed by the committee. And that committee being not trained up well in the word of the Lord. They themselves do not know what is the mind of Christ. They want to have a judgment upon you and say, looking upon the first message itself, this guy is good, let him be. But they do not know that how much damage they are doing to the church, how much harm they are doing to the church. 
and they are accountable for it. It is better to be an individual believer in the sight of the Lord and to seek His glory by daily learning in the word of the Lord and glorify Him to the maximum rather than becoming themselves to be the pastors or appointing themselves to be the pastors and destroying this church great flock. Every believer has been a king, every believer has been Rosh, every believer has been to be called as Rum. Every believer has been called to walk in the victory and in the power of the enthroned king to rise. Every believer in this church age. Because every believer has been invited to look upon the knowledge of Christ. We the church age believers are inexcusable. Because we have everything. Our pleading of ignorance at the judgment seat of Christ for not giving number one priority for Bible doctrine. You are inexcusable. Don't think God can kid with you. Or God can make kidding with you. You are, in, you are inexcusable. If every second is gone without redeeming in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to His glory, so that every second when you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there will be a constant thrust in you to go and learn the word of the Lord and cleanse the garbage that is there in your soul and get oriented to the life of Christ, to the image of Him, to be conformed on this earth because of the pro and the pro-horizon knowledge of the pro will of God. And if you're not having that constant redemption of Lord God, the Holy Spirit work to be operated in you, not by gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and speaking along in tongues, but rather giving your life to the Word, to the Word, to the Word, because the head is always the Word. The Rosh or the Rashith or the room is only by the Word. Because wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the primary thing. Wisdom is the beginning. Wisdom is your life. And if you're not able to understand these things in the post-canon period of the church age in the completion of the scripture, the spiritual bona fide gifts which are permanent and not able to look and war again to those things, how much sad it would be for you. You will be having a tough time. And Lord is not happy with your ignorance and arrogance. Lord loves a humble believer and he gives more grace to the humble believer. But those who are arrogant and pride enough, Lord takes them out. By first giving them warning discipline and then giving them intense first stage of discipline, taking them till to the point of death and releasing so that by now at least they can wake up to this great protocol plan and life of God. And even if you don't believe even, the third even at that time, the Lord is going to erase you, eliminate sin unto death. Why do you want to fall such kind of a life, though you have been called to be the gracious one? Lord's hand are still stretched out so that he can make you all to look and understand this great will of God. Dear brethren, the victory and the power of the word, room of an enthroned king. And furthermore, being the head corner of the stone which has been used for us in the, in the church age, in the New Testament, quoted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he is the head of the church as per Ephesians 5, 23. Therefore, Rashid meant to say it is the first first regard to dignity, and the first of its kind, the first fruits, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the source of that creation, wherewith we find in Revelation 3.14 of Genesis 49.3, the beginning of a fixed period of time, commencement, origin, former state, former times, the best, the choicest, the firstling. Rashid forms part of the first word in the Bible. Some modern translators have attempted to translate the first phrase as when God began to create. Both the Septuagint translation of Genesis 1.1 and the Greek construction of John 1.1 properly translate the text they leave no doubt that Genesis 1-1 was the initial act of creation. Rashid refers to the initiation of a series of historical events as well as a foundation. It is a start, not the end. Quite often it is used of the first fruits when, which were offered in the tabernacle and the choicest fruits were so distinguished so that we could know what are we to be the principal thing of Rashid in the mind of Christ. This principal thing of Rashid which has been used in the Old Testament time this principal thing of Rashid, Arche, the primary one in the New Testament Greek. But we find in Genesis, in Proverbs chapter 4, teaching to us what it is, the great and the simple principal thing to be the head in Christ. 
if a believer allows himself to be sidetracked from the main line of God's purpose for us in this great and unique excellent species which never existed earlier, a high qualitative species, the high quality of all time, the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit species, then there is a very great harm indeed if they sidetrack in the right word, if they sidetrack from the right word. An earnest child of God, most zealously laboring at work, God never allotted to him a work indeed so utterly beyond his powers that it has been reserved for accomplishment by the mighty Son of God. When he comes in glory with ten thousands of his saints, is there no harm? Absolutely, there is in fact a double harm. The double harm is that Number one, the waste of energy in the pursuit of what it is not God's present program. And second, the neglect of what it is. These two things, what we can note to the principal reality of the things that are happening today in churches, the pastor teachers who have not been divinely appointed by God, who have not taken the burden of daily teaching the word, who are not isolating, categorizing and exegeting the word with the daily inculcation and repetition of the word of the Lord and not taking in the dispensing technique of dispensations to teach them with the intense harmonical principle. This meant they think they are doing God's work without daily teaching the word. Even in, in fact, when our Lord went through Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 11 to refute those legalists or those religion-minded people, Apostle Paul tells besides all of these things, there is constantly one thing which is going in my mind, what they are daily teaching in the pulpits daily. 2 Corinthians 4.16 though, though the outward man perishes, inward man should be renewed day by day. Hebrews 2.3 Today if you hear his voice, neglect not his word. Today I meant to say day by day. Jeremiah 20 Daily his word was burning in me. Adam and you earlier they could come. Our Lord was daily teaching them the truth. Our Lord himself in Luke 19.46 and 47 he daily taught the scriptures in the temple daily teaching and those fakery of pastor teachers who have not oriented to this realm of program in the Lord first they are wasting lots of energy in pursuit of what is not God's present program in the intensified stage of the church age, God's present program is to daily teach daily teach daily teach because we have been there in the intensified stage of the angelic conflict the gates have been shifted Without daily teaching or daily growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, you cannot wake up to know how much of burden has been given for us from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21 to know and to live that life accurately. You can't exchange it for the things pertaining to this all sin nature as a substitute for it. God's present program is what it is for daily teaching for the church. And the bona fide gifted pastor teachers have been given by God himself to the church. So that he can make the body to get oriented to the head. In fact, even indeed, if the wisdom is not the principal thing in your life, then you are not going to get oriented to anything on this earth. And you think, let me make money in the ministry and that is enough for me. Let me get satisfied with the things pertaining to my walls in nature. That is enough for me. You're kidding yourself. You're kidding very dangerously yourself. Which is not the present program for the church. Much is given for us and much is expected from us. The right duty of the Christ ministers on this earth is to see and to labor day in and day out and teach and teach and teach. When they are able to study the word. The present program is not. The present program is that every day the believers should come to the temple of God to learn the word which has been assembled as church or an auditorium. Every day the pastor teacher should train them up in the church. The, the people should come to learn knowledge from his lips. Not weekly once. Weekly once you eat just once the physical food you know where you will end up. The sad part is you want to eat three times, morning, afternoon and night. The physical food, far less they can eat physically once in a week. Then how much more it should be for your inner man? Does not the word teach for us when you walk, when you lie down, when you wake up, when you sit, when you stand, teach, him, teach them the word. They may forget the word, therefore tie phylacteries upon your hand. 
make them the things pertaining to that so that between the two eyebrows of their of their head they could make it to be the word of the lord as number one being binded upon their foreheads the door stops uh, the, the the door steps if not the doorkeepers where there have been gates everywhere you have to write this word and keep then where is the time for you all to think the food is proceeding earlier of a physical one than the spiritual food they said to jeremiah to die you shall die but it is in the hands of the lord they thought they can put him to death to the eternal one the false teachers think, at that time existed the false prophets thought, Jeremiah was a false teacher, and they thought they want to put him on eternal death. That's what the Hebrew records, muth to muth, to die you shall die. Therefore, the first death, what they want to put? They want to put him to death in the spiritual realm by telling that he shall not preach again for us. And the second death they want to put him was to die, to see that they have been physically killing him. But in both issues they never succeeded. So it will be in the sight of the right pastor, teacher in Christ. Lord knows how to preserve them. Far less he can get worried about the things. But now we are killing our spiritual man by not giving him proper food. Making him to starve. By not giving him that which is right and right principle for that inner man to take in. The reason why daily teaching has been required. The present program. And secondly, what should be the present program? They are neglecting it. Because they don't know what is the present program. What is the right minister of Diakune who goes along to labor through the dust and mud. And by that we mean the KT technology, the knee and tongue technology. When the knee bow, the tongue knows how to speak rightly the word of the Lord in the presence of Christ. When they have been in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and being first trained with the mentoring ministry of those faithful, bona fide, gifted pastors who are earlier and training them up in the right track. The KT technology. The knee tongue technology. Which should be the primer theology today in our pulpits. The knee tongue theology or the knee tongue neology or the knee tongue learning of the word of the Lord. Without bowing down your knees, how can you think? You can even certainly think that you can do God's great work? No. First, every knee shall bow, learn that principle. Far less you can think you can become a pastor getting oriented. By the so-called official degrees given by money and purchased and holding it beside you to tell I have done my DTH, my BTH, my MTH, my DD and coming and entering into the fakery of this church age and changing the present program of God and neglecting what should be the present program of Christ. The daily teaching. The church being composed of all God's saints is on the earth as a fortress in the enemy's land. Or to change the figure is like an embassy in a foreign country. Therefore, we, the believers, need to know to take interest of our things pertaining to God's affairs. We being heavenly ambassadors concerned with Christ's interests, we represent Him. And we are here not to meddle with world interests as though we are natives in the world systems and not foreigners. Our work is to look upon whether Lord is pleased or not, whether Lord's word is honored above his name or not. And we cannot go along to tell, we will do this and we will do that. No way, dear brethren, no chance. We need to make ourselves the greatest practical life to obey, to obey, to obey. One of our greatest practical difficulties in dealing with souls arises from the fact that they do not seem to have any idea of submitting in all things to scriptures. The pastors, even the believers, even the so-called bishops in the Roman Catholics or Pope, they will not and never face the word of God or consent to be taught exclusively from its sacred pages from the original languages of the scriptures. They are not able to face the word of God. 
But we know Rosh should be the word of God. We know Rashith is the word of God for you as a believers in Christ. And that was been in the believers of the past dispensation as well in Christ. Only the word was a principal thing for them. But they left it. Today also many people, though we have been given an examples, so even through Hezekiah, even an examples the way how 23,000 people were been killed in one day because of their particular murmurings and XYZ reasons, though we have been given for our admonition, we don't love to take that admonition and correct ourselves. And some morons are there. If the Old Testament people have done like that, then why can't we do like that? We will do much better than that. Not in the posture realm, but to get dethroned to my Christ. Dear brethren, many things are there for us if we can learn from nature itself. How a father protects his family against the bachelors of the gang. And that's pertaining to those monkeys. And how the pastor teacher should shepherd the flock against false doctrines which are being easily available in the church by the fakery of false minds. Laying down his life, laying down his soul, laying down his teachings. If you love the shepherd, saith our Lord, if you love the flock, you being a shepherd, lay down your life then. But where is the life that has been laid down today? The sacred pages of things which we have to teach are not been there in our pulpits. Creeds and confessions, the commandments, the doctrines, the traditions of men, these things will be heard and yielded to, but not to the word of the Lord. These things which have been made by the mind of men, our own will, our own judgment, our own waves of things will be allowed to bear sway. Expedi expediency, position, reputation, personal influence, usefulness, the opinions of friends, the thoughts and examples of good and great men, the fear of grieving and giving offense to those whom we love and esteem and with whom we may have been long associated in our religious life and service, the dread of being thought presumptuous, intense shrinking from the appearance of judging and condemning many at whose feet we would willingly sit, all these things operate and exert a most harmful influence upon the soul and hinder full surrender of ourselves to the paramount authority of God's word. Relating to the various facets of your life. Making girl crazy. And making her to be your wife and believing tongues. Ignoring the true issue of word. We find many such. But we don't find that gutful man. Who waits upon the word of the Lord and says no matter what. Even if that girl goes believing tongues and I don't believe upon that. Though she may be the love of your century. And you stay upon for the word, you don't find such man today. Because you think she is your life, in life only once you marriage, and in life only once you love. God knows who is the right woman for a right man. Getting your doctrine to be number one priority is Lord's will. Give number one priority for me. That's what he told to Adam and you as well. He said, don't eat that fruit. And when Lord is saying no, then meant to say Lord gives more happier than he gives more satisfaction or double or triple joy when he says for you not to eat, when you obey his word. Likewise, the principal word tells after the completion of canon, there are no tongues. And if there are anyone who is speaking in tongues, though she may be your love of your century, you say no for it. And Lord knows how to give you the better one than her in your life. The primary thing should be to obey God's word. I'm telling you this relationship in the view of a woman because other relationships may not have so much of weightage. Because man shall live his father and mother and have the back and become one with flesh. He shall cleave unto his wife. And Adam was been told, since you heard the voice of your wife, the earth has been cursed. The greatest relationship where Job was also been put to test by his wife. Telling that curse God and you die. And Job said, you speak like a foolish woman. As Lord has given me prosperity, so has given me the suffering, I will go through this. And he went along to prove for the truth. Today, the various facets of relationship which you have been noted in this passage. 
the thoughts and examples of good and great men, the fear of grieving and giving offense to those whom we love and esteem whom we, with whom we may have been long associated in our religious life and service, the dread of being long associated in the things being thought presumptuous or intense shrinking from the appearance of judging or condemning many at whose feet we would willingly sit, all these things operate and exert the most harmful influence if we could be upon in the word of the Lord and not follow their teachings or their religion minded. All these things are been there for you today that they will worry that they will be getting hurt no all these things are nothing our Lord said take up your cross and follow me the one who hates his own soul will be given a great life but the one who hates his soul for me and not gives his life to me certainly will lose his life if we would have compromised to speak with that woman who has been talking in tongues and if we would have got married to her you would have lost the passage of God but since you have rejected her, you will find the time to know what is the reality through the work that has been given to you. It is not that we have our enjoyment on this earth for what we came. We have come here on this earth to please God and not men. Our life is not our own. Our life is to do Lord's will. Our life is to do God's work. The other things that could be bought for you in the form of monetary value of money are also nothing. In comparison to this great work where our Lord has given for us in this church age. So, these all may surrender for you. But they are never going to be equivalent to the paramount authority of God's word. May our Lord be graciously stir up our hearts in reference to this weighty subject. May he lead us by his Holy Spirit to see the true place and the real value of his power of his word. May, the, may that word of God be set up in our souls as the one all-sufficient rule so that everything, no matter what, may be unhesitatingly and utterly reject that is not based upon its word and its authority. Then we may expect to make progress. Then will our path be as the path of the just, like a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. May we never rest satisfied until, in reference to all our habits, all our ways, all our associations, all our religious positions and service, all we do, where we go and where we do not go, we can truly say that we have the sanction of God's word and the light of his presence. Only when you have the Rosh as your light. The Rosh being nothing but the word of the Lord. The Rosh which is the head. So that you can know and understand the room, the victory and the power of an enthroned king. So that you can wake up to realize only God's paramount authority is our life. His word is our teaching. His word is our path. His word is everything for us that he has to keep alive on this earth and he leads for his glory. And without that word, we don't have anything else on this earth to enjoy. Dear brethren, think over these issues. As such, like Hezekiah, you want to rent your garments and sit upon the Lord's throne or in the temple of the Lord? No. You should put to death Rabshakak by giving a great warning that my Lord will deliver and we have that confidence because we have not sinned against him. Our relationship with that great Lord is great. And you should be available to teach by your practical holy manner of life. If Hezekiah would have been walking by learning the principles of Isaiah, the fear of God, that Rabshakak, neither Sinachari, would have even made his thought to think about Jerusalem or Judah. And these things have been recorded and kept for us for our admonition so that we should also make our lives being the remnant of Yahweh on this earth. Satan can never have authority over us. We can have only one thing on this earth to be, dear brethren, to take in the word as number one priority. To take in the word of the Lord as number one priority. Taking in the word of the Lord is our life. And there is nothing because of this great heavenly ambassadorship which our Lord has given. Being made our fortification on this earth through the word of the Lord. We can't have any other affairs on this earth apart from abiding and growing up and looking upon and pulling down every thought into captivity for Christ because every high knowledge that go against Christ should be brought down. So dear brethren, there are many things for us to come and learn. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing movements being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon his dear beloved son, that is the moment itself, we shall have this eternal truth. 
And whereas for the believer, the greatest merit is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. So that when you learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest mandate given for him is to carry Sotan Lagan. Herald the word in season out of season because of the great diamond from my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses, indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord. No matter however the chips may fall, no matter however the things may go, we are being called to get occupied ourselves in the mind of Christ. And if we are not occupying ourselves in the mind of Christ, then you are going to lose. Wisdom should be your life. Wisdom is the head. All the members of your body should listen to that wisdom. And that wisdom is nothing but the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord. So which way you go, you decide. You want to live examples the way how the Old Testament saints have left? Or you want to be the example like Apostle Paul on this earth because until and unless his teachings were been practically applied to the Philippians church, he never called them his children. Likewise, Lord will never call us as his sons until unless we live the life of Christ on this earth being confirmed to the image of him. So dear brethren, many things are there for us to come and learn as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are very grateful for this great privilege that was given to fellowship with through the word. Father, we are much thankful for the great Hebrew word Rashid, Rosh and Rum. Help us to be always the most excellent species, not only recorded and kept for us in the Bible, but in each and every facet of life that we walk, that we manifest, that we show forth, being confirmed to the image of your dear beloved Son, and in nothing to be ashamed, because with the great head rising with innocence, we could tell, with victory and power of Lord God Almighty, we are being as enthroned king, and none can pull us down. Only by thy word we are able to stabilize more and more, but our old nature activities cause them to fall down. But we are here not for that. You have given a great fortification to use rebound and to be in the fellowship of Lord God Almighty and to reign with thee as long as we have been kept alive on this earth. In Christ's matchless name we pray, Father. May Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us and those who are hearing this tape, let it be for them a blessing and challenge to witness for the truth. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.